Hey everyone, Voltar here. Now, I know it's been a long time and the new lamp isn't completely finished, but I thought I would shoot a little something today to kind of exercise that new uh, sliding camera mount rig that I built last week. And so today we're going to do a couple of very sexy things to this Japanese Model 2 Sega Saturn. I don't know about you guys, but I've always loved the aesthetics of the Japanese Model 2. Now we'll, we'll be doing a region-free BIOS modification in addition to a Phantom installation. So sit back, strap on, and let's knock the dust off of these old irons. Okay, as always, we'll start by breaking it down. Okay, the top's off. Let's break it down a little bit more. Bad a boy. Perfect. Okay, watch out for the tape. There's the optical, comes right out. Now we can proceed with removing all of these Phillips screws that hold the, uh, hold the casing in here. So let's do that. Okay. Let's see. One in. All right, let's see if we can finagle this out of the way. Great. All right, let's see if this is ready to uh, come up here. Oh, did I forget one? Maybe I did. I did. boy. See if we can't just pull this up carefully. Being mindful of all the little connectors. And that really just, it's just like that. It comes right out. Super simple. Okay, let's take a look here. Ooh, look at this little bodge. May zoom, on, zoom in on that in a second, but let's see. Um, to take the main board out, I think the only thing we need to do is just very carefully pick the main board up and relieve it from the casings. Whoops. And we're looking at the, um, we are looking at the Model 2 main board. Now this is a VA15. This is a very late in life uh, Sega Saturn Model 2 main board. Uh, and there's a, even a little uh, bodge here. Uh, whoops, didn't mean to bump that. Um, really interesting. I don't think I've ever looked at a V815. Um, very, very cool. Huh. It's pretty interesting. Pretty daggone interesting. I'm just, uh, I'm just checking it out. Okay, so what we'll be doing though, before anything else, is we will be. Um, take that ribbon off, we will be replacing this mask ROM with a flash memory module uh, that's a surface mount package uh, so we can install a region free BIOS. So let's zoom in on this, let's talk about this a little bit uh, and uh, we're going to get in here and we're going to work this package off so let's do it. Okay, so we're zoomed in pretty good here now, and we're gonna work this SOP uh, service mount package off the board. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I'm gonna be using an 858D, just a very cheap hot air rework station. But you have to remember that sometimes, uh, you know, depending on the main board revision, you're gonna to have to contend with an adhesive that's on the bottom of this uh, package here. Uh, and so you may think that your solder is not wetting very well or it's not in a very good molten state. Um, that's often not the case. It's just a matter of having that strip of adhesive on the bottom that you have to fight with. So at any rate, let's go ahead and let's flip this hot air rework station on and let's uh, extract this from the board. Let's do it. Hmm. 
Now what I like to do um, when I'm removing a package like this off of the main board, or off of a main board, is I'll take something that's just everybody has. Everybody has a pair of tweezers, certainly. So what I'll do is while I'm maintaining this distribution of even heat, I will advance a pair of just tweezers and I'll just move it in, not pulling anything. And as you, see, as you just saw, that really just came off like butter. You couldn't have asked for a cleaner pull. As you just saw, all I did was advance you know, this pair of tweezers into the package uh, while applying that even distribution of heat uh, by the way, my air temperature was at around 360 degrees uh, with 50% airflow on this 858D. Took it no time at all. Fortunately, there was no adhesive. No adhesive on the back that we had to contend with. And um, we didn't pull, we didn't, we didn't rip anything off. Um, the, the tool, let the tool work for you and it'll do all of the work. Uh, so having said that, uh, what a lot of people consider the hard part, we just did. Now wait a minute, Voltard. You're not telling the whole story here. People, more than likely, you are going to find an adhesive that bonds the BIOS's mask ROM to the mainboard. And it wouldn't be fair to just show you how easy things can be without showing you, more than likely, what you're going to run up against. Now I've repaired ugh, too many Sega Saturns from botched BIOS installs. And from my own experience, it isn't the BIOS swap that's killing these systems. It's the adhesive that people aren't taking into account. Strap on a little tighter. I'm going to go inside you. I'm, I mean, well, you know what I mean. Okay, now I know I just showed you a picture of a Sega Saturn mainboard where you could really literally see the adhesive on each side where it was just sandwiched in. Well, obviously, you know there's adhesive under there. But those aren't so much what you need to worry about. The Sega Saturn systems you need to worry about are the systems where you think there is no epoxy or no adhesive, excuse me. But let's look at this thing from the side. I wanna lift this up just a little bit. Okay, that should be good enough. Do you see these two dots? There's a dot right there and there's a dot right there. These will get you every time. There are little small dots of epoxy that go in a little grid all the way across. And if you're not mindful of these uh, and, and you work this off as if they're not there, uh, you could pull the solder resist and all the traces right off with the epoxy. So keep that in mind. Before you do a BIOS install, always investigate and examine under the chip. Hold it an angle just like I'm doing and see if you see those little, uh, see if you see those little adhesive circles under the side. You'll never know they're there unless you look because looking at it from the top, I don't see anything. Do you see anything? Of course not. At any rate, let's work it off. Okay, so we're going to turn on our hot air rework station, and we have this set to 360 degrees Celsius. And air temperature or air speed is around 50%. And we're going to hold the we're going to hold the air nozzle about five inches above the side. We're going to hold it about five inches above, but we're just going to make some circular motions here. We're just going to do a little preheating of the site. Circular motions, just a nice little even distribution of gentle heat. Okay, we need to sort of prep the adhesive that's underneath this IC. Do this for about nah, six more seconds. Okay, great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our sort of perimeter reflow where we're gonna go in a rectangle and follow sort of the, uh, the uh, pattern of the uh, pins here on the package. Nice, even, smooth motions. We want to never stay in one place for too long. We want an even distribution of heat. I won't do this for maybe 15 more seconds. The key to this, the key to working with the Saturns that do have the epoxy is to have patience. Now we're not harming the motherboard. We're at 360 degrees Celsius heat. You know, we're applying that in a nice, smooth, distributive way. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to take a pair of tweezers, just like I did before, and I want to I want to just sort of advance it in there. I want to see if we're if we're getting close, and we're not getting close just yet. I want to come back in here, 
keep doing our pattern just as we were before. Nice, smooth, even motions. And what you can do is maybe for a few seconds, come to each end of the chip and just blast a little heat right in the edges. Right in the edges, not for too long. Not for too long, just for a few seconds. We need to penetrate and get under there. Okay, I think we're actually in pretty good shape, so I'm going to take my tool. I'm just going to come in here to the side. Whoops. My mount is falling. I'll come on this side. Maybe it won't fall if I do it this way. Mm. Okay, there we go. I've got my tool. It's not quite ready. Keep applying the heat. Nice and easy. It doesn't matter if the solder's ready, if the epoxy underneath is not ready, and you take this thing and you, and you use force, you're going to take the solder resist and you're going to take traces right with it. So you got to be careful. All right, I want to come right in here. Now. Oh, there she comes. Really, that was just like butter. It looked like a lot of force, but that was really hardly any force whatsoever. I just wasn't ready for it. Okay. Turn the hot air re rework off. And that is a very clean, very seamless pull. And as you can see, the epoxy or the adhesive is still intact on the main board, which isn't a super big deal, but uh, it's just something to take note of. Now, we were very careful. We took our time. We evenly applied that heat on the side. And we were able to remove this chip and look at those pins. I mean, that is a beautiful, beautiful job. And you can do this too with a little practice and just with a little knowledge here. I mean, know what you're working with. Look at this stuff before you jump right in and make changes accordingly. Okay, so now that we've removed the mask ROM BIOS, we need to prep the side for the new flash ROM. So what I want to do is I want to take some of my No Clean Flux. I'm just going to take a little cap of it. I like to work with cap sizes. I'm going to clean my tip off, and I'm going to use some of my Goot Wick. I like to use this stuff. It's a very nice copper wicking material. And I'm just going to take that, and I'm going to lay that over, and I'm just going to glide my tip with my Goot Wick over these pads. I'm not pushing, and I'm not pressing. I'm just gliding. Okay. Now we'll get our No Clean, and we'll apply it to the top section, just like so. We're going to come in here again, and we're just going to glide over these pads. Glide over these pads. Real quick like. Make real quick work out of this. Fantastic. I'm going to come down here and clean that up just a bit. These two pads are joined, but I still like to remove all the residual. I like to remove all the residual solder that was here from the wave process, and that's pretty clean. Matter of fact, I think I'll take a corner shot of that just to show you guys how clean that is. Okay, so now we're going to prep the flash memory chip. And I just want to say that there are a variety of different ways that you can do this. Everybody does it a little different, it seems. And this is just the way that I do it. So what we need to do is we need to lift and isolate pins 43 and 44 and pins 1 and 2. And so to do that, I'm simply going to take a small precision flat-headed screwdriver. And I'm just going to lift these pins up, up, up and isolate them like so, very carefully. I'm going to rotate the chip around here. And we'll do this side. Here's pin one. We'll elevate this. I think this is the ready busy signal. And this is an address line that we'll be tying low. You never want to leave address lines floating on memory or on anything really. So at any rate, that's pretty much the prep work. Now, something else I'm going to do. This chip is much wider, well, I'll just do it like this, than the actual Sega Saturn uh, mask ROM. This is the Saturn BIO sitting on top. Look how, look how much wider the pins are on the package. Well, just how much wider the package is, so the pins are of wider uh, dimension. Now, to, to combat this, I'm going to take one side, I'm going to pick one side, and I'm just going to push all of these pins inward. I'm just going to do that with, well, you can do that with anything. I think I'll use my flat-headed screwdriver. So just to show you, I typically don't do this, but this is a safe way to do it. 
So I'm going to hold the memory just like this. And I'm just going to start pushing in. Pushing in, pushing in, pushing in. Repeat all the way down. Okay, now that we have our flash IC memory prepped and ready to go, let's just simply drop it on the board. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to take my hands and I'm just going to dry fit this package on. And I'm just taking a look at everything, looking at where I'm sitting on each side, and I'm really just focusing on one corner. If I can get one corner in perfect alignment, everything else will follow suit. So once I have that corner to where I want it, Maybe I'll just drop and eh, just a bit of flux on there. Just a little drop of no clean. Let me see. Let me get in here just a little bit more. Let me take a good look. That's pretty good right there. I like that alignment. So what I'm going to do is my soldering tip is loaded up with a little solder. We've already fluxed, fluxed this side. I'm just going to introduce a little. Now we have a very nice joint that will anchor the corner in. This will allow us to articulate this uh, package across the whole way without moving our initial alignment point. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm just looking, I'm, I'm focusing on the top and on the bottom. I'm just looking at the alignment on all sides. And you know, I think that right there is pretty darn good. Let me just move this up a little bit so I can see. I think, yeah, I like that. What do you guys think? You like it? I think it looks pretty good. So when I have the alignment to where I want it, which I think I want it about right there, I'm going to move in with just a little bit more solder, and I'm going to come on to the other side. I'm going to flex that in and solder that in. That's done. This chip is very, fairly well anchored. And now that I have this chip pretty well anchored, I want to do one final look, and I want to rotate this up so you guys can see, I guess in better context of what I was talking about. Notice how I bent the pins inward so that they will make contact with the pad landings. It's really that easy, and it's perfect alignment. So I want to set this back down. Now we're going to apply some flux, just a little more to this side, and I'm not going to drag this first because the way this chip is, I want, to, I want to press down each leg on this side just to make sure we're making good contact to the landings. Just go down the, just go down the way, just go down the way. I might need to load up just a little bit more solder here. There we go. Okay, everything looks pretty well prepped here. All the, all the uh, legs are making good solid contact. Having said that, I'm now going to load up my tip for real. Okay, if there's any left on here, I'll just, for good measure, dump that on there. And we're gonna do some dragging. Let's do it. And just like that, that entire side is done. It's very well wetted. Let's rotate the board and let's anchor the other side. Okay, and I'm gonna come in here. Excuse the finger, just helps me hold the board in position. I'm gonna start tacking in. Go down the way, down the way. We're just roughing it in. This isn't the final sort of soldering pass that we're making. We're just roughing this in. Okay. I'm going to tilt that up so you guys can see that a little more clearly. It looks really, really good. Okay, now the first thing that we need to do is we need to connect 
uh, pin two, which is right there, we need to connect that pin to pin 13, which is this big traced pin right here. This is ground. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I got some 30 odd conductor here. I'm just gonna come in with my soldering iron. I wanna find pin 13. I'll make sure you can see this. I don't want my hand to block this shot because this is fairly important. And I wanna come in here to pin 13. Just like that. I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna let go. Now, these are very fine joints. If you wanna test the joint that you just made, give it a good, strong wiggle. That's how you know if it's good or not. This is an excellent joint. So, what I'm gonna do now is I just wanna take my flat-headed micro-precision screwdriver. I'm gonna hold this taut. Now, see this wire is nice and taut. Taut is another word for tension. I need to connect this to conductor two. I just wanna come right here with my snips. I see exactly where this needs to be cut. I wanna come in here and cut. Great, now I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now because I need to come in here with just a little solder. I need to prep this, I need to prep this pin because we will be soldering to pin two. I just wanna come right here, just like that, beautiful. I wanna take my wire strippers, I'm gonna lift this, I'm gonna lift this wire up just like that. I wanna take my wire strippers and I'm just gonna cut off just the bit of a head right there like that. Cut that, beautiful. I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna take my tweezers and I'm just gonna position this just like so. Into there like that. I'm gonna come in here. With one hand, I'm gonna hold the wire into approximate position. With the other hand, I'm just gonna tack. I'm gonna tack this in. So one, two, and three. That's it, that's all there is. We'll flip around and we'll do pretty much the same thing to a different set of pins on the other side. Let's do it. Okay, so we're looking at the other side of this chip again and we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, only we're gonna be soldering from pin 23, which is VCC, to pin 43, which is one of the pins that we have lifted right here on the edge. Now, pin 23 is VCC, so that's a five volt supply. So we're effectively pulling pin, 20, or pin 43 to a high state. So just like before, I want to grab uh, some 30 odd conductor. I'm just going to come right in here with it. I just want to solder directly to pin 23. Make sure my damn fat fingers aren't in the way of the shot. I get in trouble with that sometimes. Okay, we'll apply a little heat, just like that. Oh, it's hard to see in this damn camera. All right, we'll apply some heat right in there. One, two, three, four. I think that's good. It's difficult to see at this angle. Okay, we need to bridge pins 43 and 44. So I'm just gonna apply a generous amount of solder here to do that. Perfect, we have a bridge. Now I'm gonna move this conductor in that we stripped, just like that. Move it in, apply the heat. Beautiful, it's a perfect way to joint. And that's it guys, that is the BIOS installation. Now at this point, I would highly encourage you to <laughs> hook this system back up and test it before moving forward, but that's it. We've done it. Well guys, if you followed me this far, Voltar is proud of you. Now we've tested the BIOS, it works great with a US copy of Virtual Cop uh, of all games to test with. <laughs> but now we're onto this. Um, we are going to install the Phantom Universal. Now this is a universal mod chip that is designed to work with both 20-pin Model 1 systems and 21-pin Model 2s, including JFC laser assemblies and Sanyo. That's what this little jumper is up here for. I believe this was, um, I believe this was created by bad underscore ad 84 uh, over at the Assembler Games Forum. Uh, so if you're in need of one of these, uh, go send them a message uh, over there. Uh, I've actually had quite a few transactions with bad ad. Uh, super, super nice guy, very honest. Uh, he's helped me out a time or two in the past with some uh, products I was needing to get a hold of. Um, definitely a trustworthy guy. Super, super uh, valuable asset there to the community. At any rate, let's get ahead, let's go ahead and let's prep this chip and let's put it in um, missionary style. 
Okay, because we have a 21 pin drive, it makes sense to uh, put five volt supply on this side. So we'll just tin that. And we do have a JVC drive. So we're just gonna go up here and we're gonna strap this for the JVC side. That's basically all of the prep work. Now we can just put this in. Perfect. Okay, we've got the five volt supply line here uh, situated where we need it to be. And now it's really just a matter of hooking these things up. Now remember on this side it does say CD21 and on this side it says NB21. That's fairly self-explanatory, so I'm going to disconnect the optical drive from the um, mainboard housing. I'm gonna open the tabs on this FFC connector and I'm just gonna push this in, rock it back and forth a bit if I need to. It's a snug fit, great. That's in, let's just lock that in. I'm gonna use the 21 pin cable. There's a 20 and 21 pin. We need to use the 21 pin because we have a 21 pin drive. And I'm just gonna insert that in there. Lock our tabs down. Great. Now we'll insert it here to the main board. Fantastic, that's installed. Now, let's just work with these ribbon cables just a bit here so we can make this look somewhat clean. Not a fan of this big long cable. Not too much I can do about that. You know what I really like to use uh, to hold this down? People are gonna laugh, but this is a perfect application for this. What about either a little double-sided tape or a drop of draconian hot glue? Maybe right here. So I'll do that and we'll have this baby finished. We'll do a little test run too. Let's do it. Okay, now that we've applied just a little bit of Peter Norris special sauce under the Phantom Universal, this is finished. Now I know this was a super long and breathy video, but I think it was a really important video because I can't tell you how many emails I get uh, from people who have, you know, inadvertently botched up the BIOS installation because of that gosh damned adhesive. So at any rate, I hope that my techniques and sort of my instruction here has imparted some knowledge on you guys and that you can do this more easily uh, without worrying so much about it. Now this isn't the debut video I wanted to make in the new laboratory, but you know, that's okay. It's a good video and I think that it's going to help a lot of people. Having said that, if you haven't liked or subscribed to my channel, give it a consideration. Those things really help me and they inspire me to make more videos. Any video suggestions that you have, please put those down in the comments. Um, and uh, until next time, thank you for your time. Thank you for your cooperation. Voltar wishes you good evening. Catch you later.